But hey, today we have a special guest. Uh, we have a crazy person in the house, by the way. Um, so when you, hear, when you help out a church plant uh, a long time ago and it didn't work out, and then you learn about another church plant, but this church plant isn't in your hometown, it's halfway across the country. And when you have four children, four, like all of them are theirs, all of them. Yeah, all, every last one of them is theirs. When you move your business, your family, leaving your family, uprooting and moving halfway across the, the country to start another church in a city where you don't know anybody. How many of you mean that's, that's a little crazy? All right, so would everyone give a vibrant welcome for my friend, Michael Prasad? <laughs> When you put it like that, I feel like I uh, should probably rethink a few things. <laughs> wow. Well, today I get to share with you something that has been in the works in my life for about 10 years. It's a journey I've been on that God has been taking me on. And man, I, I'm so excited to share this with you. I, about 10 years ago, I found myself just kind of drifting through life. And I don't know if you've ever felt like that before, but that's where I was. I just didn't have a, a sense of like, a destination. I didn't have a place that I knew I was headed. I was, I was drifting. But God began to work something out in about that, that time frame that would change everything forever. And it would cause me to live a life that I couldn't ever have imagined, even doing something as crazy as what Brandon just said. Here's what I found out. That, that people who live with purpose make a difference in the world. And, and when I look around, it, it, it bothers me when I see people who, who are drifting just like I was. And I want for them what I found. I, I want for, for them what, what I found to have made a huge difference in my life, that they would find their purpose. And that's the big idea for today. I want to unpack with you. How, how can we define, how can we find what that is in our life, and how can we live it out uh, I just want to say uh, thanks again to uh, Brandon for giving me the opportunity to, to share today. And I was excited when he asked me to do it because I knew pretty much exactly what I was going to say. I was like, man, if I had one message that I could give, like this would be the message. Um, so I'm excited about that. And yeah, Brandon and I, man, we, we met several years ago, probably three, four years ago. And he shared this vision with me and uh, I shared it with my wife, Melissa, and we prayed about it. And we're like, let's do this. Like, this is, this is what we're created to do. Let's move across the country. Let's do something absolutely outside the box of what we were thinking. And I, I'm just so glad we got to know Brandon and Jonna better. And we just knew like, wow, this is it. Like, these are the people that we want to do this with. And uh, it's been so amazing uh, ever since then. Uh, we've been here for about 18 months now, or actually uh, coming up on two years, wow, uh, in South Florida. And it's been awesome. But a few months ago, um, I, I had this opportunity that popped up. And I didn't realize it was an opportunity until God showed it to me. See, um, I had this uh, business trip that was going to happen. Uh, and then God gave me this idea. Uh, what if I took my, my son, my oldest child with me on this business trip. And what if uh, we had a moment together? So I, I was looking at the map and I realized that I was going to be going to Central California. And right next to it, where I was going, was Sequoia National Park. And that was like a, a really amazing opportunity because Sequoia National Park has the biggest trees in the world, these canyons. So I, I uh, talked to Melissa. And I was like, hey, I think I want to take Jaden with me. And sure enough, we bought the extra ticket. I stayed an extra day. And Jaden and I went on this trip together. He kind of helped out a little bit with my work. And then after that, we spent a whole day in Sequoia National Park. We got to see the, the, the biggest living organisms in the world. And it absolutely blew our minds. We got to jump across like these little waterfall thingies. And we got to uh, see these canyons that were hundreds of feet uh, tall. We created a moment right there that would stay with us, that will stay with us, really, for the rest of our lives. We, we had a moment as a, as a father and a son. We had a, this incredible moment that we now share and will share for the rest of our lives. And the reason that we did that is that God gave us this idea. God gave me this idea, and it was really birthed out of this place of kind of knowing the purpose that God has for my family. And, and that's what I want to lean into today, is how, how do we find out what our purpose is? See, about... 
you know, in that moment, I felt kind of like the greatest dad in the world. I was like, man, this is awesome. But that's not how it started. About 10 years ago when, when um, I was in the hospital, I remember the nurse came over and she said, hey, uh, Mr. Prasad, you can take your baby home now. <laughs> and I remember the, the feeling of terror that kind of came over me in that moment of like, what? You mean uh, there's not a test? Uh, you didn't train me. You didn't even show me anything to do. Like, I could barely change his diaper. I just felt so unprepared. And, and as an individual, I felt unprepared. But now, I was res responsible for somebody else. I was responsible for the outcome of somebody else's life. And I, I just felt that. I felt, oh, no. I hope I don't mess this up. So, so I did something that... Uh, has been part of my journey ever since then. I, I began to ask God for wisdom. And it really, it's, it's in this verse, it's James chapter one, verse five, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. And God began to do that. In fact, he pointed me towards something that I, that I knew. And that's, that's the amazing thing about God. Like he knows all of us, he knows our strengths and our weaknesses and Man, he just guides us in, in our areas of strength. So um, I, I, build, I build brands for companies all the time. So God said, hey, what if, what if you built a brand for your family? What, what if you spend time and what you did for companies and organizations, like you did that for your family? What, what would that look like? So I began to sit down and, and kind of shape that. What, what would that look like? And, and really what a brand is, it's an identity. If I were to mention some of the brands that we all interact with, you know, on a regular basis, you guys would kind of know what I'm talking about. So if, if you're trying to get into shape uh, and you're like, hey, I need to get, live a healthier lifestyle, uh, you might think of Nike. Nike is a brand that they've developed this idea of a healthy lifestyle, an active lifestyle. So you might think about, hey, I should probably go to Nike and buy some shoes or something to help me do this. If you're thinking, hey, I should go hang out with my friend and we should catch up for a little bit, you might be thinking about Starbucks. Because their brand is this third place, the, the third place between work and home where you can just come and hang out. In fact, they were the first people to kind of do coffee the way that they do coffee, where you pay four or five bucks for a cup. It used to be, it was 50 cents. But now they have these lounges and bistro tables. You can sit down there as long as you want and just hang out. That's their brand. Or this, this brand is kind of near and dear to my heart, um, Chick-fil-A. So as a father with young children, Chick-fil-A is just, wow, They're, they are incredible in my life. There's, every once in a while, there's this kind of this moment where I just feel so overwhelmed. I'm outnumbered. Melissa goes off somewhere. I don't know why, but she goes off somewhere. She leaves me with all four kids, and I'm responsible. And I have to feed them. So one of my, one of my plays, my go-to plays in my playbook is Chick-fil-A. So I know if I go to Chick-fil-A, like they, um, their brand is to add as much value as possible into every interaction that they have. So uh, you, you'll notice it. If you've ever been through the Chick-fil-A uh, drive through they have like people there kind of helping you, getting the food ready and all that stuff. It's, it's amazing. When I pull up there and I go inside and I order, first of all, the menu is simple. So everything on there, my kids are going to eat. So it's, it's great. They give me this little cone thing and tell me to go sit down. So while I'm spending 10 minutes getting my kids situated, they get the food out to me and they bring it out to me. And they give me this plastic wrap that wraps the table and they know it's going to spill, like stuff's going to spill. So they just let me wrap the whole table and it's great. At the end of it, I just kind of pick it all up and throw it away. It's awesome. And then I get to be the hero to my family. It's like, oh man, look at that. You guys had a great time. You get to go play in the little playhouse. It's, it's awesome. Chick-fil-A adds a lot of value to me. And that's what brands do. Brands define what, what their identity are. Like, what are they going to be doing? Uh, who, 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 what are they going to be known for? And then they make decisions in line with that. So as I began to put together a brand for my family, I, be, I began to think about what is it that we want to be known for? What is it that's the end result that we're working towards as a family? Uh, so I began to put this together, these thoughts together. And my challenge to you here in this next 20 minutes or so is what is your brand? What is your family brand? It's just a different way to think about things. It's, it's God showed this to me from a different perspective, and it really helped me out. My hope is that it helps you out as well. What is your brand? 
because there's too many people that are living just drifting through life. And that's not God's best for us. People with purpose make a difference in the world. We need to make a difference in the world. That's God's design for every single one of us. It reminds me of Amanda Eller. Uh, several years ago, she went out in, in a, the jungles of Hawaii, and she decided to go on a hike. Her plan was to be gone for about three hours, but she got lost, and it took 17 days for the rescuers to find her. When they found her, she was dehydrated and malnourished. They asked her, what, what happened? And she said, well, I just went into the, the, the forest, and I was just going to go for a, a short walk, and I have this great sense of direction and these great instincts. I thought I could just find my way back. But she said, I walked and I, I saw a path and it looked good, so I took that path. And then another path looked good, so I took that one. And she said, all of a sudden, I, I was lost. I, I didn't even know how to get back. All she needed was one little piece of equipment, a, a, a compass, a compass that could tell her where north was. And, and from there, she could figure out east and west and south. And from, from that, she could figure out a way out. The rescuers said she was no more than three miles the entire time from, from the exit where she could get out. She just didn't know it. She didn't have a compass in her life. And, and really, that's what Jesus wants to be for us. If, if we're believers, we have a compass that can help us navigate life. No matter what our reality is, there's, a, there's an ideal that Jesus will point us towards to help us get situated and get where we need to go. See, Jesus was a master of, of this. He, he dealt with the reality of what was going on, but he always pointed towards the ideal of what should be. See, when Jesus taught, he would teach like this. He would say, the kingdom of God is like, and then he would tell a story. He pointed to an ideal, but he never forgot the reality of the people that were all around him. He never forgot there were people next to him who were hungry. So Jesus said, I, I will be your bread. I'll feed you. He never forgot the reality of people who were sick that were next to him. And he said, I will be your healer, and I'm going to heal you. He never forgot the reality of people who were next to him who were living in sin. He said, I will be your savior. I'll die for you. Jesus dealt with the real, the reality of what was going on. But he always pointed people towards the ideal. And that's what he does with us today. No matter what our reality is today, your, your reality might not be all that great today. Maybe you're dealing with some things in your life, some sickness, some depression, some lack. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And he wants to be that in our, in our lives. He points us to an ideal. That's, actually, that's why we come to church. If, you, if you're here today and you haven't been to church very much, that's what we do. Like, we come to church so we can learn what Jesus says about us. Like, what is the ideal that Jesus has for us so that we can be able to transform our thinking to be more like his? That's what it's all about. That's why we read our Bibles. You know, if you're, if you're a Christian, if you're a believer in Jesus, we, we get our Bibles out and we start to read it and learn what's in it, what it says about us and who we are and who Jesus says we are. You know, in the Bible, there's actually not a great example of a of good family. <laughs> Every family in the Bible had some dysfunction to it. There's not one great example. Uh, the first married couple, they brought sin into the world. <laughs> the, uh, the first kids, Cain and Abel, uh, one of them killed the other one. <laughs> so there's not a great, even Jesus' family didn't believe who he said he was until like he was resurrected later on. Like, there isn't a great example. So Jesus always dealt with the reality of where we are, and he does that today. He, he deals with the reality of where we are, but he points us to a, an ideal of the way that, th that things should be. In fact, first, or John chapter 1, verse 14 says this, The word became flesh and dwelt among us. We, he, he basically came full of grace and truth. So that, that, that verse tells us this, that... God assumes sin, and he sent Jesus to come to redeem us from that sin. So he assumes that there's a problem, and then he sends us a solution, an ideal to help us get out of that problem. And, and that's, what our, that's what identity needs to be based on. 
So here's what we need to know. God has some ideals in our life. Again, we come to church, we learn about these ideals. Things like being honest, right? Telling the truth. Because when we lie, we break the relationships in our lives. We learn about things like that. Principles that God has put in place. They're in the Bible. We learn about those things. We get to transform our thinking to to be in line with that. But there's also some realities that are unique to us. Because God made us all unique. He designed us in a specific way. And we get to learn what that is as well. So for example, like... I would be a terrible doctor. I cannot stand the sight of blood. I mean, one time I I had a cut on my ankle and I looked at it and I threw up. (laughs) I can't do it, but maybe you're great at that. But God knows that about us and he wants to give us an ideal that that we can start to put into place. So when we take his ideals and we take our unique giftings and spiritual giftings, and we start to put that together. That's really how we, we form a brand, what I'm calling a brand. Again, just another way to look at things. And we get to live that out. And when we, when we do, we live in our sweet spot. We get to thrive. We're not doing something that we're not created for. That feels like work. But we get to do something that we absolutely love to do. So there, there's three keys I want to talk about that will help you to build a family brand. And I just want to say this. If, uh, if you're like me and you've got a house full of kids, this is for you. Like, how do you build a family? How do you lead that whole family to uh, something greater than, than what you're experiencing maybe in the, in the day-to-day? If you're a married couple, this is for you as well. How do you, how do you create unity among yourselves to so where you, you're heading in the same direction? Or maybe you're, you're single. This is for you. How do you create a, an identity of who you will be in the future so that you begin to see the opportunities as they present themselves. Take a moment to reflect on this as we talk about it. Like, how how do I start to do this in my life? The the first key is your why. You have to know your why. And and your why is really the fuel that keeps you going. It it helps you to stay in line with uh, whatever it is that God has for you. It's the fuel that keeps you excited. It keeps you energized when things get hard because reality will hit the real will happen and we have to have a why inside of us that keeps us going uh you know melissa and i we we made this move from kansas and it really was a hard thing for us to do but we had a why in our lives that really determined that decision for us well in advance as we were creating this brand thing that we were doing you know, for a few years, we decided that our why was that if Jesus really died for us, then he deserves the very best, best version of our family. And if you're a Christian, if you're a believer in Jesus, your why is probably going to be in line with that in some way. If Jesus, if you believe he really died, the creator of the universe all-powerful, all almighty God, if he really came down and died for you, then he deserves the very best version of you. Right. And, and we need to live our lives like that. So when this, this thing came up, this vision came up to go to South Florida and to help people live a better story, we felt, man, this is, this is it. This is for us. We need to do that. So sure enough, we, we sold our property, and it was the hardest thing we have ever done. It's still fresh, and I can remember the, uh, the struggles. I, we, we got way less for our house than we thought we should have gotten. On our drive down here, moving all of our stuff and our family and our kids, uh, our car broke down on the interstate. <laughs> A couple kids were in there. We got to deal with that. We got down here, and it was, man, it was so hard to find a property, a house that was just right for us. It was so hard but we had this why. We, we knew this why inside of us, that Jesus deserves the very best version of our family. And that was why we were doing this. And he gave us the fuel, the energy, the, uh, the passion to, to keep going, to keep fighting. And that's what a why does. You have to find that why inside your life. And you have to make that a reality to, to where you begin to act out of that. The second key is to, is to define your vision. What is the end result that you're working towards? So again, th- this is what brands do. Brands do this really, really well. And that's why I think it's a great analogy for us to think about. Like how, how do we create an identity? Because we're thinking about the end result. If, if Chick-fil-A decided to serve steaks, that wouldn't work. <laughs> we would never go to Chick-fil-A for a steak. 
that's not who they are. That's not their identity. Brands, when we, th when we think about it, it helps us say yes to the right things and no to the things that don't belong. So when we have a vision for our family, for our lives, it helps us to do the same. We say yes to the right things and no to the things that don't belong. It's, it's avoiding the trap that Amanda Eller fell in when she went on that walk that day. She saw a path and she decided, I'm going to take that. She didn't have a why in her life. She didn't have a vision in her life at that time to help her stay on, on track. You know, the other day I was, I was out for a walk in my neighborhood and I looked up and I saw an airplane and the airplane had a jet trail behind it. So I could see that it made a turn, not a huge turn, just a little bit of a turn. And I began to think about that. You know, if that jet, I was here in South Florida, if that jet was going on the West Coast, they might have been going to Seattle. And that turn that I saw them make might have taken them to San Diego. Like the end result could have been drastically different just because of that slight adjustment that I just saw up in the sky. When we have a vision, we're able to make adjustments that get us to our final destination. You know, if you've ever flown before, you might have heard the pilot the, uh, come on the intercom and say, hey, listen, we're gonna, we have a storm up ahead of us. We're going to make some adjustments, and uh, we're going to make a, a few turns, but we're, we're going to get to our location. We're going to have some storms that pop up, some things that don't go as planned. Reality is going to hit, but what we need is an ideal, a destination that we're headed towards so that we can get back on track. And, and that's, that's what God wants to give us. When we find out what he says about us, who he says I am, like we just sung about, then we can get back on track. We can go to the destination that God has for us. So our vision that we came up with, uh, Melissa and I thought about, that. what is the end result that we want? And we decided it was something like this, that in the end, at the end of everything, at the end of our lives, that we would have, it would all be about relationships. And, and that th our family would want to be together. Like that's the, we, we oversimplify, we, we just want to be together. So as a, uh, as a married couple, like, hey, we would just want to be together. So even when we're apart, we would just want to be together. So we'd have that type of relationship. As, as our kids grow, we just want them to, to want to be with us, that we'd have such a great relationship, they would just want to be with us. And that they would want to be with each other, that they would have great relationships among themselves. So that's our over, oversimplified vision, that our relationships would be amazing to where we would just want to be with each other when we're apart. That was what allowed me to see the opportunity that I talked about earlier to take Jaden on this trip. It's kind of like when you buy a, a car and then you drive around and you see that car everywhere. When you have a vision, you begin to see opportunities everywhere. God begins to bring those up. So you begin to see them and then you can take action. So that, that trip cost me an extra like $500 to take Jaden with me, but it was so worth it. We stayed an extra day, we paid for that extra night, paid for the extra plane tickets, some extra meals, but it was worth it because now I have a, in my relationship with Jaden, I have a pillar in the ground that I've just placed in there that we'll, we won't forget. We're gonna always have that moment together. And I'm working now, I'm making decisions now for the end result that I want in 10 years, in 20 years, in 30 years. So how do we have a vision in our life that helps us to stay on track? That when things don't go as planned, when the real happens in our life, we have an ideal of what God wants for us in our lives. The third thing is that we need to have a mission. We need to be on a mission. A mission is something that's more short-term. You know, the vision is more long-term. It's way out there. Um, it's years in the future. But the mission is what we're doing right now in this moment. So that helps us get ultimately to the vision that God has given to us. So what is our mission? What does that look like? You know, the, the idea of having a mission is that we, we just need something in our lives that is extremely compelling, that we want to be a part of, that's more exciting than what somebody else could give us. Because there's going to be times in our lives where we're going along and somebody else is going to offer us a different path. And it might look good, but if we're on a mission, then we know the path that we're on is exactly where we need to be. The way I look at it is, man, if I, if I look at it with my, my kids, I just think, man, there's going to be a day where somebody's going to approach my kids, and they're going to have a different mission for them. They're going to have a different path that the, my kids could take. 
And I just want to live a life with them that is so compelling that they say, no, it's all right, I'm good. I'm good. I'm doing something pretty amazing. I'm, I'm part of a, the Prasad tribe. I'm part of the, ultimately, I'm part of the kingdom of God. And you know what? That's enough for me. I don't have to go on this, this journey that you're offering me because what I'm a part of is, is greater than that. How can we be on a mission to where we, we decide to make decisions that are going to help us live a life that makes a difference? You know, uh, just just a quick story about what this looks like for us, what this looked like for Melissa and I. And I, I'm telling stories about my family because this is something that has played out in my life. I could tell you stories about my business or some other things that, that uh, we can probably all relate to. But I think everyone can relate to this idea of a, of a family because we've all been a part of a family. <laughs> it might have been a dysfunctional family, but we've all at least been a part of a family. Oh, we all have a family even right now that we're trying to lead. So I think we can all lean into this and relate to it. So Melissa and I had our why, right, that, that Jesus deserves the very best version of our family. We had our vision that we would have great relationships, want to be together when we're apart. So we decided that when our kids were just in diapers, when Jaden was just in a diaper, like, hey, we want to create a moment. As soon as our kids could understand uh, and recognize what was going on, we want to create a moment for them that would put a stake in the ground of their identity of who they are as part of our family and also as part of God's kingdom. So we decided when, when they turn five, we're going to take a trip with them. So sure enough, Jaden turned five years old. Uh, and we loaded all the family up in the car. And we took, uh, swung by me, mom, papa's house. And we dropped off the younger kids. And then we drove. And we went to the airport. And we said, hey, Jaden, you see that jet? Do you want to go on it? And his eyes lit up. He's like, what? Of course. Yes, I want to go on it. And we said, let's go. So we got the luggage out of the trunk. He didn't know it was there. And we hopped on an airplane. He had, man, he had such a good time. The pilot let him sit in the front row. We just flew, and he just looked down, and he was talking the entire time. So excited. He didn't even know where we were going. He didn't care. <laughs> so we, the next day, we woke up, and we said, hey, Jaden. It's early in the morning. He said, hey, Jaden, would you like to go to Disney World? And he's like, what? Yes, pops out of bed. We got, we got there first thing when Disney World opened, Disney uh, Magic Kingdom. We stayed there the entire day till midnight. Like We just were there the entire time and just had a, had a blast. The next day, we woke him up. Hey, Jaden. We are from Kansas, right, at this time. Hey, Jaden, would you like to go to the beach? He's like, wow, yes. So we went to the beach, and he just spent hours picking stuff up, looking at animals, playing in the water, had a great time, ate some ice cream. It was great. The entire time, Melissa and I were telling Jaden, hey, Jaden, this is who you are. Do you know, Jaden, we named you that for a reason. We, we prayed for you for three years. We couldn't have kids, and we prayed and God asked, asked God for, for kids, and he gave you to us. So we named you Jaden. Your means God has heard. That's who you are. You're part of this family. And we began to unpack this in, this entire time as he's experiencing all these things and just sensory overload. And he began to understand in that moment, we, I won't know fully yet uh, what it was, but he began to understand who he was in that moment. So we created this mission that Melissa and I were on to, to create this moment for, for our kids. And, and I just want to encourage you to ask yourself, what, what, is, what is my brand? What am I working towards? What is the purpose that God has for my life? And get clear with that. We, we have an enemy who wants to destroy us. And one of the ways he does that is with confusion. He wants us to drift this way and drift that way and try this and try that. But God wants to give us clarity. He wants us to be clear about who we are as his child, that we are who he says we are. And we live that out every single day. We make decisions now that will determine our future way out in, in, our, in, the, in the next 10, 20 years from now. That's what God has for us. People that live with purpose make a difference in the world. That's God's design for you. And I just want to challenge you to, to ask God. You know, this, this year is getting ready to wrap up. It's a great time to do this. Ask God. Remember that verse? 
James 1, 5? It says, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives it generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Make this your prayer. Ask God, what is it that you have for me? Help me to lean into that. Help me to have fresh vision. Help me to understand my mission for the next year. What do you want for me in the next month? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to make a difference? This is what God designed us for. And we need to lean into it because it makes all the difference. It makes our lives incredible. We won't believe what we'll do when we live with a purpose. And you know, here, right here at Vibrant Church, we have this thing called a growth track. So step one is ask God. Step two, get into growth track because that's where we can help you on this journey. I'm telling you, when you do it, it'll be amazing. You'll be so glad you did it. And, and uh, just, just to wrap up this, 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 with this final thought, uh, a few years later, Jaden's brother, Judah, turned five. And we, we invited Jaden to be part of the surprise. So he was in on it when we took Judah to the airport. And then he was in on it when we said, hey, Judah, would you like to go to Disney World? And then he was in on it when we said, hey, you want to go to the beach? At the end of it, I asked Jaden, hey, Jaden, how was it? How was this trip? And he looked at me and he said, hey, hey, Dad, you know what? I had more fun on Judah's trip than I did on my trip. That's the cherry on top. When we find our purpose, it's amazing. One of the things we say around here is that there's two amazing days in your life, right? The day you're born and the day you find out why. And the cherry on top is that you get to help other people now do this. Let's pray. Lord God, I just thank you right now that God, you have given each and every one of us a sense of purpose and direction. I just pray that you would guide us by your Holy Spirit that we would lean into that, that you would speak to us even in the next hour as we begin to ask you for wisdom, that you would fill us with your wisdom, that you would fill us with your guidance, that we would make decisions that are in line with the purpose you have for us, for our families, for our lives. Lord, I just thank you, God, that you're directing and guiding our steps. In Jesus' name. I want to give you an opportunity before we close things out. It's something we want to do every week. If you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. If you're going to live with purpose, it starts there. Jesus is the one that is our north star. He's the one that guides us. When we're in the dark and we don't know what's going on, he's the one that says, come this way. And you need that in your life. And I want that for you. So I'm going to ask you in just a moment, if you want to ask Jesus into your heart to be your Savior, I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand. You're going to stay in your seat. And we're just going to say a prayer together. I just want to lead you in a prayer. That's all it is. So with every head bowed and every eye closed right now, nobody looking around, I just want you to, if that's you, you want to ask Jesus to come into your heart. And you want to begin this journey to start discovering the purpose that you, or, or maybe you want to commit your life, recommit your life so you can lean into your purpose, then I want you to just raise your hand. And raising your hand, is just a, it's just a representation of what's in your heart. Like, honestly, I can't even see you right now. <laughs> but just raise your hand if that's you. And then say this prayer with me. In fact, everybody in this room, just say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. I know you died for me. And I ask you to be my Savior and to be my Lord. I choose to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, if you just said that prayer, we would love to give you some resources to take your next steps. There, there's, a, there's a number on the screen. We'd love for you to text HOPE to that, that number, and we're going to send you a link to your next step so you can really go on this journey together, and we'll help you do that.